Yes, I still exist. I know, the best news you've never heard. But I'm back, ready with another review and another doodle to complete. Of course, the next episode of uh, Doctor Who to talk about. It's a fun one for me. It's uh, The End of the World by, again, Russell T. Davis. Going straight into the concept, like last time. And in fact, I really enjoy this one. Uh, taking a girl to see the year 5 billion and witness the destruction of her home planet. Wow, what a way to make an impression. It, you know, definitely did, it did with me. I gave the concept a score of 9. It's all really about an upper class alien party with a scheme around mass murder and profit. I really love it. <laughs> Sprinkled with themes of morality and identity within a culture shock for Rose, this is such a fun idea and always now look back at it so positively. Uh, I always like the concepts and ideas Russell has for his futuristic stories. They always uh, come off so well. Writing for this episode, to be honest, is kind of both great and bad, uh, but mainly my love for this story scores it an eight. The great bits fit around the Doctor and Rose. They really have some great interactions. The scenes they share really build on both of their characters. Rose's fear is so real. Uh, mainly the shock of what's happening around her is something I don't think we properly see anymore with companions. I especially love um, when tainted love is played. <laughs> she has a scene of just literally you know, gawping at all the you know aliens around her. It's quite a scene to take in. Nine and Jabe have a great character moment, uh, especially when they're trying to fix and um, the heating and seeing what's going on. Uh, you can see that more is building on the Doctor's past, of which when they mention the Time War and his past with the Daleks, both characters um, really have time to explore themselves. Uh, especially uh, one line that sticks with me for that Doctor says in response to um, letting Cassandra die uh, was that everything has its time and everything dies. Uh, such a strong line for the Doctor to say quite early and on in his era. Uh, Russell really just shows his ability to give cast great material to work with. The bad does come in the form of Cassandra, not the character. I really do love her character, but to me she comes across so obvious, the main suspect. She, um, out of all the different life forms of aliens, gets most of the screen time. So it would be, it would have fell flat if um, any of the other species were the um, villain. Then again, if they pick uh, picking Cassandra, it was obvious enough, so there really was no win situation. I wish Russell, to fix this, gave the um, more lines and scenes to the different aliens to blur the predictability of who the main suspect was. The long-running director from the Russell T. Davis era, Euros Lin, debuts with his first episode of Doctor Who, and he doesn't disappoint. Using Davis's script, the type of futuristic atmosphere that I like to see is made. There's only a few more stories that kind of create this tone that I love. Uh, Yorosin keeps the mystery and intrigue going with fun shots and a bubbly pace. Really cannot fault any of the shots. I really always remember the shot of Rose standing at the window of one of the platforms watching the large debris of Earth flying round after Earth's destruction. It was really a, an impactful and beautiful visual. Or even the positioning of the Earth at the beginning, as Rose has shown um, the Earth out of that like, little side room May, um, during the pre-title scene. It's quite good. Eurus landmarks himself really as a strong director for the revival era from here on, um, and he comes, he does become very memorable the further you go on for his work. Uh, so I do award the directing of this story an eight. Now for visuals, um, I think the visuals, even are uh, nearly or well, plus a decade later, still look really damn good. Uh, when the sun expands, destroying the earth, that looks really good. Especially the exterior of the whole platform, the platform one, I think looks really damn good as well. The only element that doesn't really hold up to the others is the CGI for the robot spiders. I probably can expect they won't be, it would have been the easiest design, but you can really tell from when they are their models to the CGI. Uh, they look, their legs especially, look way more thicker and more prominent rather than the ones when they're CGI. They're much thinner, more loose. You can really tell, and it. They, no, they're not awful sometimes, 
when they're smaller in the distance, especially when they're lurking around, there's a few shots, I think. And the doctor's like walking down a corridor and you can see one's like scurrying across the well, the doorway he's going through. That bit, fine. But there's other points where they really don't look as, you know, well designed. Um, in terms of production and the costume department and the prosthetics, they do look absolutely amazing. I love the designs of all of the other alien uh, life forms. It's a shame they weren't utilised as much. Um, I really do adore the design of the trees, especially Jabe and her two um, friends, guards, whatever they were. I would have loved, I, I still do, I would love a companion of the same design, especially as Jabe herself was a very cool guest cast character, um, which was very damning that she sacrificed herself for the Doctor. The whole set itself looked pretty good, looked solid enough for the year 5 billion I guess. Um, for me, visuals get an 8. Now for music, I scored the music a 10, the highest of the high. I love the fact that uh, they used Britney Spears' as Toxic and labelled it as a traditional ballad as everyone was readying for the song to expand. I love that as a line, it's one of my favourites of the story in the series. Um, I would have drawn that, but I already had some of those ideas. Uh, Murray Gold himself switches up by creating some really great atmospheric schools to dress the scenes. He adds uh, some great pressure to the damning term, is it time frame, because it's very close, because it's all kind of set within a small amount of time in comparison to other stories. This is all set in a small amount of time. Uh, uh, I really do love the music, you know, the features in this story. It does, it suits it so well. It's one of the, I think, one of the best well-made uh, soundtracks for a story made in Doctor Who. The cast for me in this story are top-notch once again. Really, um, I love every single actor and their effort they put in. Chris and Billy put on some grand performances once again. They really sell themselves as the stars of this show especially during the last five minutes together they show how much of a powerful dynamic rose and nine are i do love the surprise appearance of jackie during that phone call to the past all of the guest cast are well performed and, and amazing especially cassandra uh, it's a fun and saucy prominent character of the story uh, jay herself was a very compassionate and warming room honestly i really do love the whole ensemble cast they did a brilliant job that's why i give the cast a nine the ending um, I did feel the resolution for the story seemed both simple and quite not quite brutal than ideas uh, the main resolve the whole burning to death issue was to merely just protect and shield it um, from burning to death which half saved some people half didn't which I thought was quite damning it's quite good uh, it was a quite a brutal end for um, Cassandra even though it wasn't really the end because you know she returns, thanks. That's um, the villain we always ask to come back. Uh, but that was quite a striking moment. I always remember that, especially as uh, the camera always zoomed in a little bit further every line she did before she just, you know, exploded from dehydration. Uh, there was a great character moment shared between Nine and Rose. Uh, this does reflect the show in a series in a better way of how deep and emotional it can get. I think uh, mainly the, the end, it, I would say kind of like loses the energy, not necessarily as a bad thing, but I thought this could have been a better way to have maybe more of a bitter end uh, for this story for Rose, reflecting um, maybe a more darker world than maybe she would have expected, because mainly the end we get like a touching moment between her and Nung, maybe more of a know upsetting outlook on everything would have been a bit more maybe a bit better for me i'm not sure but i'm not opposed to the ending that we've got i award them the ending a seven the threat i did find the threat a little bit difficult to you know differentiate the the sun expanding and the heat from it was more of a villain as much as you know cassandra was with her robot spiders i did give the threat a five because even though there are the repeated meme gang with their robot arms and brooding uh, um, appearance, they didn't really do much. Um, except from, you know, backhand Rose and keep her in a locked room. 
Uh, that being said, uh, the idea of being burnt alive is so horrible itself, especially you know by an expanding star. So the cause of concern for that was a massive threat. I do like that, though Cassandra herself alone, especially when she was put alone, she wasn't really much of a threat. So alone herself, she isn't really much. So that's why the score's a bit lower than it is. The reaction, I give uh, my reaction an 8, mainly because I think this is a story um, This is a story that's really fun. I love the humour of the story, I love the emotion, the ideas, uh, they're quite powerful. I um, actually really remember disliking this story when it came up to rewatching the show. I always, uh, especially when I was around 10 or 15, um, I kind of really despised the story, thinking it was boring and dull. Of course, now looking at it, I really enjoy it. I guess probably I didn't understand it fully. Now I do and appreciate it for its fun ability to be weird in the realm of science fiction. Uh, whenever I watch it, watch it now, I'm always seem to be smiling. I think uh, maybe this could be me I dissing, uh, just missing the feel of the Russell T Davis era, but it's just a general gem to watch now. For um, my the likability of the story, I think with my reaction, this is an episode that I have changed my opinion on. Um, over a matter of years. Uh, to me that often is a rare thing. There are a few episodes which I have looked back on and wondered if I was a bit numb in the head when I was writing them. Um, it can be hard uh, to re remember with such a social impact from the fandom whether you should or shouldn't like an episode. Of course you shouldn't be you know, conforming to what people are thinking. Have your own opinions. You need It's kind of better for that. Uh, I don't really know where to where the end of the world sits with a general consensus. But, you know, I really enjoy it. Um, I'll give the likability of this story a 9. Adding up each of the elements of this story, you get a lovely sum out of 100. Overall, I give the end of the world an 81 out of 100. Simplified maybe to an 8.1 out of 10 if you want. Which is odd because I always remember scoring this lower than a 6 in every element. Um, it was always at the bottom of my rating list. Never really looked at, you know look back at it with a fond state of mind because how times have changed oh well that's it for this review i hope you enjoyed at least something about this uh, if you know the show you know that the unquite dead is next with a writer slash actor i have mixed opinions on uh, to show your appreciation you know what to do use that thumbs up symbol discuss in the text box selection below and to keep updated with future uploads, click on that red oblong. Thank you for watching.